The Chinese government has absolutely been decimating investors so far in 2021. First, they went after the fintech names. Most notably, of course, was the cancellation of the Ant Group IPO. Next, they went after the private tutoring business, which effectively turned them into not-for-profit organizations. They then went after Didi, which caused the share price to drop by 50%. And now Tencent, in their recently quarterly earnings call, mentioned that you should expect more Chinese regulation over internet-based companies as the regulation has been loose in this industry. Does this mean that Kathy Wood is right and now it's time to completely sell your Chinese stocks? I'll be honest with you guys, I don't think so. And that's what we're gonna dig into in this video. You're watching more money, let's get it. What's up everyone? Thanks so much for tuning in. You're watching the number one channel on YouTube for people that wanna retire early. And let's jump right into it. The increased regulations in China have completely spooked investors. Kathy Woods has even had to say that although she's keeping an open mind about Chinese stocks, she is largely out of all of her positions. That's right, Kathy Woods and ARK funds have largely sold out of their Chinese stocks. Now keep in mind, that doesn't mean that they're completely out, they do still have small immaterial tracking positions. And of course she's not alone, as you guys are already aware, many institutional investors have been dumping their holdings in Chinese securities as well. This has pushed Alibaba stock down approximately 30% this year, and Tencent stock has also gone down in the same trajectory at approximately 26%. I point out these two names because these are the two darling companies of China, and they're not even shielded by the increased regulation. So what exactly is happening? What are all these regulations that are causing the Chinese stocks to decline? Let's jump right into it, and then I'm gonna follow it up by going into how I'm sort of navigating investing in China now. now let's Let's start with fintech. The Chinese government went after fintech companies with the canceling of the Ant Group IPO. Now you guys might recall, I actually covered this when I did the five part series on Alibaba, but I'm gonna quickly run through it now. Personally, I'm actually on board with China on the move of regulating fintech companies in China, as the regulators are concerned with the potential banking crisis spurred on by fintech companies operating in the banking business. Now, could the fintech companies like Ant Group likely cause a banking crisis in China? I'm not really sure if I'm being honest, but China is working with Ant Group to make sure that this doesn't happen. And I think because of that, Ant Group will eventually IPO and this issue is gonna be largely behind them. They will continue to grow. Now, does financial regulation really impact Alibaba at its current valuation? I don't think so. I don't think the stock drops more because there's additional fears of financial regulation for Ant Group. If you take a look at my model, you'll notice that I'm not forecasting any material growth for Ant Group. It's largely just all upside to my valuation. So I'm valuing Alibaba somewhere in the three to $400 a share mark. If you add in Ant Group, that's all upside. That'll take it closer to the $500 a share, but I'm not really even thinking about it. So it's all upside. So overall, I'm not gonna say that the FinTech regulations aren't a concern. I'm also, as an investor of Alibaba, concerned about the FinTech regulations. I just think it's overblown from the perspective of the share price of Alibaba. Alibaba's trading at the price of maybe one of its segments. I think you could price Alibaba at $385 a share just on its online consumer business, and then you got all upside for its cloud, FinTech, digital, and anything else that they enter into. So overall, am I concerned? No. Am I a buyer? Yes. If the share price continues to decline, you absolutely can be certain that I'll be picking up more. In fact, I might even be purchasing call options at that point. Now, when it comes to the Chinese government cracking down on for-profit educators, personally coming from a poor family, I actually agree with the Chinese government here. In most regular communities, parents already have huge anxiety over their children doing well in school, but they largely trust the public school system. It's really normal for us to fully trust the public school system and we'll get a tutor here and there if we need. Now in the Asian community, including Chinese and Indians, I'm sure you guys have all seen this at some point in your lives. The Chinese and Indian kids are typically put under much higher expectations from their parents than the non-Chinese and Indian children typically are. And my guess as to why this happens from someone who this actually has happened to is I think the parents feel a little bit of guilt if their children don't succeed at the highest level. And I think that guilt is more so in these communities than 
in other communities. So you'll notice with Chinese and Indian students that the public school system is often not enough. These kids are going to after school programs, summer school programs, and oftentimes they get skipped grades. They're generally at the top of the class. You'll always notice this. And guys, I'm just speaking in generalities here. And the proof is obviously in the pudding. Stronger students are correlated with higher income earners. From here, you can see that Asian people, which include Indians and Chinese, earn approximately 25% more than their Caucasian counterparts. Now here's the problem in China. In China, savvy business minds have dialed into the insecurities that parents have and created promises of boosting their children's grades. These marketers tapped parents' guilt mentality of not giving their kids the best chances they deserve with anxiety-inducing pitches. Scammers have typically preyed on low-income households with misleading free trials and deep discounts with subsequently locking families into expensive multi-year contracts. And Chinese citizens were complaining about this on social media. So the government naturally reacted with a crackdown. The most susceptible people to this are the poor working class parents who will fall for these types of sales tactics. Coming from a single parent poor family myself, we would have been exactly the target family for this type of sales strategy. And stuff like this did happen. We just didn't know enough and growing up we did fall for things. I'm not gonna lie. So I have no problems with the crackdown on for-profit educators because it's not good for the emerging class in China to saddle them with a lot of debt where the results aren't really what they're being promised. At the end of the day, the public school system is there to allow your children to get a leg up. Anything extra should be seen as extra and not mandatory. So I'm with China on this. I know the stock market doesn't like it. I know Jim Cramer doesn't like it. But at the end of the day, when it comes to investing, we can't just look at dollars and cents. We do have to look behind the companies, see what they're doing. Do we agree with their sales practices? Do we agree with management? This is why one of the four questions that I always ask when looking at every company is, does the management have the ability and willingness to run the business? business and what that does is it causes you to look at the business and look at what the success factors are. If you did that, you would have easily seen that the success factor here involves pushing parents to subscribe to these programs. I'm not okay with that. I probably wouldn't have invested in this business. So I'm okay with the Chinese government cracking down on it. I know not everybody's gonna like that. It's just a personal opinion, deal with it. When it comes to tech security, we all understand that China is concerned with the potential of a data leak occurring into foreign hands. Didi's share price decline was done over potential fines relating to their refusal to delay their IPO and conduct a self-examination of its network security. The risk, of course, is the company's ride-hailing data falling into foreign hands. So the moral of the story here is that if in China the regulator asks you to do something, even if you think that it's stupid, you do it. So will DD get through this? They probably will. I think there might even be a buying opportunity in DD's shares right now. I haven't done the research, but it's something that I will be interested in looking into in the future. Another thing that really hit the share prices of Chinese companies, including Baba, was the Chinese move to ensure that delivery drivers are making at least a minimum wage. Now here's where my experience of being an Uber delivery driver for a four part series on this channel comes in handy. Now, although I was earning approximately $25 an hour gross, and $20 net, which is money after all costs, I could have easily been earning much less. If I just took every order and sat in the long drive through lines and took orders that I knew weren't going to tip, I would have absolutely earned less than the minimum wage. So are there drivers that are being taken advantage of by tech companies in the gig economy? Absolutely there are. And I can say that because I saw the potential of it happening from my own experience. I'll give you a very real example. If you're doing Uber Eats after midnight, a lot of the orders that you're gonna get here in Toronto are either McDonald's or A&W. The problem is the drive-through lines for both McDonald's and A&W take 20 or 30 minutes. So if you're gonna get paid $3 for the order, but you gotta sit in the drive-through line for 20 minutes because the side door, which is usually meant for Ubers, is closed after midnight, then you might make $6 an hour gross. So that's before your, your fees. So you can see how people may be making less than minimum wage. What do you do at those times? You cancel all the A&W and McDonald's orders. You stay by restaurants that are open late into the night where you know you're going to get a large bill and a large tip. Guys, I was making $25 to $30 an hour even up until 4 in the morning because I was going in the right areas. But it call comes from feel. So putting in a system where it penalizes the company for 
having drivers work and make under minimum wage, I don't think it's a bad idea. All it does is it makes Uber accountable to their drivers. And at the end of the day, if you have happy drivers, you're gonna have more on the platform. So this is an optimization problem, but it puts it in the hands of Uber as opposed to the hands of the drivers. I'm 50-50 on this. I personally, I don't need the government to help me here. I can figure it out, but I understand how some drivers may not necessarily be able to figure it out. So a little bit back and forth as far as the way I feel on this one. Now, you guys can see that China is pushing to ensure that everyone gets a minimum wage when it comes to working these types of jobs. When I saw this headline, to me, it was just the cost of doing business. Alibaba owns Ellie.me. And I'm sure these regulations will slightly increase the cost of doing business, but I doubt that it will be substantial as most of the drivers are already likely making higher than a minimum wage, especially if you take into account tips. I don't know if China has a tipping culture, I'm just assuming. I think the easy solution here is to do what some of the ride hauling platforms in North America do, which is have drivers schedule shifts so that there's not too many drivers sitting around and not getting orders. Also, it'll be easy to adjust the algorithm to ensure that high dollar orders are going to anyone who has been on for longer than a few hours and not hitting the minimum wage thresholds. The programmers at these companies can absolutely build in algorithms that can do that. Overall, this may slow business growth, but I don't see a major issue here, especially not to the share price of Alibaba. Now, there have been calls from the Chinese president to redistribute wealth and clamp down on higher income earning individuals in China. The idea here really is to ensure that all Chinese people succeed and the middle class continues to emerge in China. The challenge here for internet companies is that Beijing may be eyeing the preferential tax treatment for internet companies of 10%. They may bring up that tax rate to approximately 25% which is their corporate standard. Also, a bigger potential change that they could make is implementing a property tax in China, starting with the most expensive homes. So welcome to the first world, China. We've been facing these issues in North America for decades. This is why you saw Tencent join its peers in increasing its philanthropy projects to move more than 15 billion by committing to donate to causes such as healthcare, education, and rural de development. Do I think corporate donations are a viable solution in the long term? I don't think so. I think the corporate tax rate will be raised over time, albeit I believe that China will do it slowly. Now, is my thesis really changing? I don't know, at the end of the day, you can't forecast everything that's gonna happen. Over a long enough time horizon, every company will experience significant turmoil. Do I believe that these stated regulations and possible future regulations have dire effects on Alibaba? my only Chinese holding at the moment? No, I believe that Baba is a darling company of China. Jack Ma is still a hero and a well-connected business leader. Baba has massively increased the wealth of the citizens in the country and will continue to do so. The only piece of news that I can see that would directly impact Baba's future growth prospects right now is the July 2021 4% online gro shopping growth rate. This is down from an average of 21% over the past five years. Now, if this is prolonged, it could absolutely have an impact. Do I believe that this is a substantial slowdown? Well, in order to believe that, I would have to believe that the Chinese middle class is done emerging. And despite the massive amounts of contrary evidence, new people in China are done logging onto the internet for the very first time. I think I would be foolish to believe that. My thesis remains the same. So you can download my BABA model from the description below and see exactly how I think each of the segments are gonna be growing out. At the end of the day, investing is all about having the courage to focus on the soundness of the company when the share price is declining below your purchase price. Before I buy any company, I ask myself, what will I do if the share price declines by 90% tomorrow? Because eventually, I am gonna buy a company where the shares do drop by 90% tomorrow. If the answer is that I'm gonna buy more, then I buy the heck out of that company as soon as I can. That's why my due diligence is so strong. That's why I build models and go through the Buffett four-step process. It's also why I believe that I was fortunate enough to reach my retirement goal in my 30s. Look, can I make mistakes? Can I be wrong? Absolutely, I can. That's why I also focus on portfolio strategy. No one company should really be more than 10% of my portfolio. There are times where companies do become more than 10%, and there's times where companies become less than 3%. But overall, I try to keep around 10 to 20 positions, all between 5 and 10%. That allows me to be wrong. I can be wrong on 4 out of 10 names and still have a really good performing portfolio. So at the end of the day, 
I focus on sound research. When the shares decline, I look at my research. Did I make any mistakes? And I go from there. And I think you guys should too. I think BABA is a buying opportunity. But at the end of the day, I also believe that you need to think about your portfolio strategy. Don't buy too much of it because we might be wrong. But once again, I will say, if this thing continues to decline, I will be adding to it. Even if it gets to around 125, I might be looking to buy cash secured puts at about $100 if I can get a 25% yield. So I'll leave it at that. And let me know in the comments if you guys are buying China or not. And I'll see you guys later.